Hello class. Welcome to lesson four of the skeletal system. This is the final part of the skeletal system. For today, we are going to look at joints. I'm Miss Eugenia Chiaminza. Let's begin. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the various types of joints and the various parts of a mammal they can be located. So our key terms, we have movable, movable, immovable, immovable, ligament, ligament, hinge, hinge, gliding, gliding, synovial fluid, synovial fluid, ball and socket, ball and socket. So what is a joint? So a joint refers to a structural point where two or more bones meet. Which part of your body do you think you can find a joint? Yes, almost every part you can find a joint. From your skull right down to your limbs, you can find joints. So when you look at the region where your head, the skull connects to the vertebral column, you have a joint there. At where your limbs join to the pectoral girdle, you have another joint there as well as other parts of the body, even your fingers. Your ability to move is as a result of joints. Now we want to look at types of joints. We have two types of joints. We have the movable joints and the immovable joints. In our previous lesson, I made a reference to the fact that you cannot move your skull, part of your skull, such that you would have your head moving this way and the upper part of your head also moving that way. Yes. Now this type of joint which cannot move freely or there's little movement or carrying in is what is known as an immovable joint. So the opposite will go for a movable joint. So when we talk about movable joints, you are looking at joints which allow movement of body parts. So if this part of your body is able to move, it's as a result of the joint which occurs here, which will allow movement. Now the same will not occur for bones which are found in your skull or bones in your pelvic girdle or even bones in the sacrum of the human. You get the picture? Very good. So that is what we mean by movable joints. They allow movement of body parts. They are formed also by bones which are not in direct contact, which are held closely by ligaments and muscles. Now imagine if the bones are held together. You see, it would be very difficult to move, right? Yes, this is what we mean by being held together by ligaments and muscles. Muscles are tied loosely so that they can easily move. If they are fused together, bone to bone, it will be difficult for movement to occur. But because there is something else which holds them, there is the ability for one to slide over the other. This is what we mean by the ability of the bones to move. Now we have types of movable joints. Because when you look at your body carefully, it's not every part of your body that you can move much freely. That movement or the degree of movement you have here is not the same as what you have in your neck. And it's not the same as what you have in your waist region. So we have types of movable joints. Now based on their degree of movement, movable joints are classified into three groups. We have the ball and socket joint, we have the hinge joint, and the gliding joint. Now with the ball and socket joint, we have a type of joint which allows movement freely in more than one plane. The ability of your body to move in a circular motion, the hand moving freely is what is known as the ball and socket. We have an example being the shoulder joint as well as the hip joint. Now this is known as ball and socket because the bone fits into a socket such that it is shaped like a ball and it fits into where it's supposed to fit in so for instance when you look at this image you realize that the bone which is the limb or here in this case we have the femur it fits into the hip joint now the hip joint allows movement in only one plane such that you are able to move your hand from one direction to the other i'm not able to move it in the opposite direction unless i bend it this way you see i cannot move it backwards this way yes that is what is known as a hinge joint it's quite similar to what we have in doors so much so that when a hinge joint is connected to a door the door is moved in only one direction you cannot move the door backwards 
unless it's a sliding door and even that there are some that are hinged in that way so you find the movement occurring in only one plane so you have it in your elbow and your knee i hope you get this difference also very good the third type of joint is the gliding joint this joint allows bones to slide over each other to allow movement freely so with this type you realize movement is much free and you have them gliding over each other an example of such joint is what you have in the wrist and in the ankle so you see that you can maneuver your wrist as well as your ankle in a gliding way so this is what we know or is known as a gliding joint now the next type we are looking at is the immovable joint remember we said there are two types of joints the movable and the immovable now the immovable quite offset to the immovable joint they are joints which do not allow movement and they are formed from bones which are in direct contact such that they are fused do you remember any bones which are fused from our previous lessons very good we have the pelvic girdle now this is an example of an immovable joint because the joints cannot move in any plane they are fixed another example also is in the skull when you look at your skull you realize that the bones which form the skull are fixed to one position they cannot be moved or they cannot slide over each other or change their position that is what is known as an immovable joint so this is what we mean we have the fixed joints you see and also we have in the pelvis we have the pubis the ilium and the ischium forming the pelvic ghetto this is fixed you don't have your hip moving now this is what we have for today and this is the final lesson for the skeletal system so for today we looked at the various types of joints and the various parts of the mammal the various joints can be located now this has been really exciting i believe you've learned a lot about the skeletal system the role the skeletal system plays in a mammal and the various parts of the skeletal system very good now for your assignment for each of the following joints you state one part of the mammalian body where it can be found ball and socket hinge joint gliding joint i believe you'll be able to do this assignment very well very good thank you so much for your attention and see you in our next class